welcome to my channel. My name is Kathleen Darby and you can also find me at K Darby Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw on black or toned paper with colored pencil. I have been doing that kind of drawing for about six years now and I wanted to kind of show you the things that I've picked up along the way. Um, and here are some examples of my other work. And here's the drawing that I'll be walking you through today. This is a kingfisher bird, and there's some other things that you're going to be needing to get started. So first of all, you're going to need some paper. Uh, I use Strathmore black paper. I really like it. I've also left a link in the description for that. The second thing, of course, you're going to need are some colored pencils. And so the kind that I recommend are Prismacolor colored pencils and Faber-Castell colored pencils. Uh, Prismacolor pencils are a little bit cheaper. Uh, both of them are sort of on the higher end, uh, but it's actually really essential that you get a good colored pencil if you want to draw on toned, especially black paper. Um, and also show you another reason why. Another thing you're going to want to do is figure out the colors that work best on the paper that you have. So here I've created a little swatch, uh, a swatch cheat uh, little thing that will help you figure out which color is actually going to show up well. Um, so you don't always know. Um, in my experience I figured out that Prismacolors work best with vibrant color but not, not as well with whites and yellows. However, I found that the Faber-Castell works really well with white and sometimes yellow, but not as much with the color, which is kind of interesting. So I kind of use a mix of both when I'm trying to achieve my colored pencil on black paper drawings. The other thing that you're going to need is an eraser. Um, but what's really important about this is that you get a black eraser if you're going to be using black or toned paper. I have found that using white erasers actually takes away some of the pigment from the black paper and that using a black one actually kind of solves that a little bit better. Alright, so let's get started with the drawing. And I'm just starting out my drawing with a 2B graphite pencil. Just trying to figure out where on the page I want my bird to be, starting to outline the head and the beak, and also where the different parts of the feathers might be. It's important not to press too hard with your pencil, or else you actually run the risk of damaging the paper. Strathmore black paper especially is very fragile, where once you damage it in a certain place, it really doesn't recover that well. What I'm doing now is going to be going over my graphite sketch with a white pencil, and that's just going to define exactly where I want those features to be. Also, you see on the top of the head, I'm defining the different shape of the feathers. I also just switched over to a blue pencil. I feel like the blue, a light blue, will do sufficiently to capture the different parts of the wings as I kind of map them out in this step. So I'm going to go ahead and lay in some highlights here. Uh, this is going to be where you define where the strong highlights are. Also you want to be working in the direction of the feathers and that's really important. So if you know that a certain part's going to be bright white or definitely a highlight, uh, go ahead and put in those white and cream highlights before you move on to color. Once you're ready to move on to color, then pick up that blue or whatever pencil and just start laying in that feather texture in the direction that the feathers are going. It's really important to pay close attention to the origin of the feathers, how they interact with each other, um, and how they're playing off those highlights as well. When you need to work with white in a black paper, toned paper, or any other kind of paper drawing like this, you really need to put in the whites quite um, hard 
first. Uh, because once you put down a different color, say if you put down a blue first and then you try to put that white on top, it doesn't exactly work as well. So now what I'm going to be doing is defining the ribs of the feathers on the back. That middle part of the bird is very bright and I want to make sure that the ribs of the feathers will stand out. And so then after I've done that, I'm going to go in with my blue and just sort of start to fan off those shapes that I've just created to make a feather texture. And it's really important that you stay true to where you put those spines of the feathers and not just kind of willy-nilly at this point. It's really important that you define the different shapes and that you're pressing hard with the pencil as well before you start to do some general shading later. When you're placing the spines in the back, it's important not to just use your visual reference as an exact guide. Look more at the general shape, curve, and length of the different feathers that you're using. Now I'm starting to put in some highlights into the main wing of the bird. Uh, and there's some strong highlights on the feather wings. And so what I'm going to do is make sure that those areas are blocked out with white and that I can't really cover that part up later and not be able to put in that bright white that I want. And now that I've done most of my basic highlighting, I'm going to go in and just start to fill in the color little by little with my blue and teal pencil. It's also important that you're either shading somewhat lightly and or trying to define those different areas of the feather with very deliberate strokes. After I've done that, I'm going to go in with a darker blue and sort of define some of those shadow areas that are still bright blue. And then I'm going to go in with a gray and define that top area that's a little bit more fluffy that doesn't need as much definition. After I've done that, I'm going to go in with my whites or my cream colors. I'm going to define all of those white patches of the bird. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So I'm going to ask you to use your eraser. And if you don't have a small black eraser, that's okay. What you can do right now is put in those bright whites where you want them. And then go over it with a tan or a similar color that's not too dark, but will give it some sort of tone or some coloration because not everything's going to be bright white all the time. So go ahead and put in some of that tone and then what you're going to do is in the shadow part you're going to lightly erase parts of it and that's going to give it kind of a fading effect so that the pencil isn't as drastic onto the black dark paper. Now's the time to fill in some color and I'm also going to move on to using my orange. So I'm going to lay in some color of the orange, making sure that I'm going in the same direction as the feathers. And then I'm going to go on top of that with a highlight. So you can do different kinds of highlights. You could do one with white, or sometimes it's better to use a color that's similar to it. So I'm going to use a very light yellow. And then what I do is put on a shader color. So then I'm going to take my burnt auburn color and put in some shading into that brown area. Another way you can do this, like I said before, is to erase certain parts of it, and that should give you a little bit more of an effect. Also, you just keep going back and forth between shading and between shading and highlight, and that can really make the difference and make things look a little bit more 3D. Now it's time for my favorite parts, doing the beak and the eyes. So I'm going to take a highlighter color, probably a white or a cream, and then I'm just going to start defining that highlight on the inner beak. And I notice on this kind of bird that there's sort of a gap between the top and the lower where the highlight is. So I'm gonna make sure that those are crisp and clear. And once I've done that, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue or a different tone just to sort of set apart the paper from the beak. Since the beak is quite dark, it can kind of get lost and sort of become a little bit more flat and two-dimensional. Next is time to draw the eyes and the eyes are the most important part they really make the picture come alive so what I'm going to do is go ahead and define the outer part of the eye and then I'm going to define the highlight of the shadow inside the eye 
Once I've made that highlight, I'm going to go on with a dark blue and just sort of fill in a little bit of that eye, but not all the way. I'm going to let the black sort of speak for themselves. It's really important that you don't actually use black in the making of a black paper drawing. It can often make the drawing seem a lot more flat and kind of glossy looking because that black isn't really as black as the paper. So now we're coming to the end of the drawing and I'm just going to fill in those last little parts, make those last highlights and make it just come together a little bit more. The total time it took me to make this was about one hour. Thank you so much for joining me today for my black paper tutorial. Please give a like and a subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at kdarbyart. Thank you for joining me today and stay creative. Thanks. Bye.